Mini games in games can be a fun distraction when you want to take a break from the main story. This is especially effective in games with large single player campaigns that take a while to get through. I mean, what do people do in real life when they want to take a break from their daily grind? Well, a lot of people go fishing. It's also been said that every good game should have a fishing mini game included. This can be a great way to relax while entertaining our hunter-gatherer instincts. Of course, fishing isn't the only way to go. There are also gambling mini-games that feature dice or cards. But today, I want to focus on one of my favorites, but also one of the more rare mini-games, and that is the collectible card game within a game. And there are no doubt plenty of games that feature card game mini-games, but not so many that feature collectible card games in a customizable deck. The first one that I could remember playing was Final Fantasy VIII's Triple Triad. The great thing is that once you get your first set of cards early in the game, you can go up to almost anyone to play a game of Triple Triad. Some characters have rare or unique cards that you can only get by playing and winning against. And it's usually these unique cards that are some of the most powerful in the game. The great thing about Triple Triad is that it's very easy to learn the basics. And from there, as you get further into the game, you'll be exploring new regions and pick up on new rules and mechanics. The very basics are that each player gets to choose five cards from their own set to play with. Pay special attention to the values in the upper left corner of the card the higher the number, the stronger the card, with A being the highest value of 10. The top number value corresponds to the strength of the top edge of the card. The left value is the strength of the left edge of the card, and so on. When everyone has selected their cards, there is a flip of the coin to decide who goes first, then each player takes turns laying down a card on a 3x3 grid. The player's cards show up in blue and the opponent's in red. When you set a card down next to your opponent's, a check will be performed to see if you can capture their card. If the edge of your card that touches the edge of theirs is of a higher value, then you'll flip over and capture their card. But don't worry, only opponent's cards can be captured on your turn, so your card is safe even if it has a lower value on your turn. When it's the other player's turn, checks will only be performed on the card that is being set down with the cards that it touches. So your cards that are locked in on all sides are perfectly safe. If at the end of the game there are more blue cards, including any cards that didn't get played, then you win. More red cards means the opponent wins. At this point, the basic rules say that the winner gets to choose one of the opponent's cards to keep. Now keep in mind, these are only the basic rules. More advanced rules can involve different types of trades or factor in the elemental powers of each card. The Triple Triad game is not only fun to play in itself, but it can also benefit the main game as well. Eventually, you gain the ability to convert cards into items or magic, which can greatly benefit you, especially early in the game. I have so many fond memories of playing Triple Triad on the PlayStation 1, it's one of the reasons why Final Fantasy VIII still remains one of my favorite Final Fantasy games today. Unfortunately, by the time Final Fantasy IX came out, I had already moved on from my PlayStation 1, so I didn't actually discover Final Fantasy IX's Tetra Master until more recently. Tetra Master can be seen almost as a more advanced version of Triple Triad, but also with more chance elements incorporated, which I'm not quite as fond of. I really feel that card games shouldn't involve dice rolls. Another downside to Tetra Master is that you can only hold up to 100 cards in your inventory, and there are 100 different cards in the game. So if you want one of each card, you can't really have any duplicates. Aside from these frustrations, it's still a really fun diversion from the main story, and again, you'll have the option of playing with almost anyone in the game. So you'll want to challenge as many people as you can if you want to complete your card library. Moving on to the final card game I wanted to mention here is 
The Witcher 3's Gwent card game. When I first started playing The Witcher 3, I skipped over the card game. It really felt overwhelming. Like sometimes when I play games, I just want to relax and not think too hard. So learning the card game on top of everything else was just too much for me at the time. But lucky for me, T was playing the game one day and started to really get into the card game mechanics. It looked like she was having a lot of fun with it, so I thought, well, maybe I should give this a try. All I had to do was ask her for a little help, and next thing you know, I am hooked. Now I'm traveling all around the map, trying to find new towns to find people to buy cards from and challenge in hopes of winning their rare cards. So in The Witcher 3, you'll find that it's usually shopkeepers or innkeepers that want to play Gwent. Check with them first to see if they're selling any cards, and then challenge them to a game. They might award you with some new cards the first few times you defeat them in Gwent. I should mention though, this version of Gwent that is included in The Witcher 3 plays a little bit differently than the standalone Gwent games. I feel like this works out for the best though because the changes in the standalone game make things a little bit more fun and challenging for both players involved, whereas Gwent in The Witcher 3 only needs to make things fun for the main player. I mean, let's face it, only a computer controlled NPC is going to want to lose to your OP deck over and over again. But honestly, that's why I like collectible card games within games. Most of the fun in collectible card games for me is in building the most overpowered deck. But in real life, that just ends up costing a lot of money and nobody's going to want to lose to your deck anyway. A collectible card game within a game lets you live out your fantasy of building that amazing deck and then traveling all over the game world completely destroying everyone again and again. But that's going to do it for today. Let me know guys what are some of your favorite mini games within games. There are so many these days from fishing mini games to gambling, puzzle, regular card games like poker, blackjack, or collectible card games like the ones I've listed here. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, I will see you later.